Hello everybody, Ragtag Sagvi here, welcome to the next episode. In the last episode, we've reached Dragon Rock. That wasn't not enough to change your color? I must have miscounted. We've reached Dragon Rock. Oh, and after getting here, got lost for a little while, and then we eventually found our way to the- Ooh, that is actually a really good color. I'll have to see what your other colors is, but I might actually keep you this color. This, I love the light blue with a pink back. Anyway, we freed an Earthwalker, which helped us destroy the shield generators to destroy the robots, which led us to free a high top, which opened the gate. So now, let's see what we can find deep down here. And I believe these guys we have to kill because there is a life force door blocking the way. So these guys, you cannot ignore them. Right, if we look up here, we got a cloud runner that's caged up. So we need to find a way how to get him out of that cage. <laughs> I forgot he actually screams out of help, get me out of here. I want you to stay. You auto pick up the bomb. Survey says yes. All right, so we need to hit these off. Now I believe they're on a timer. Let's try that again. Don't worry, I will. Yeah, they're on a surprisingly short timer. So when you start going up... Alright, so we did that. Now, if I remember correctly, they're jerks. And I believe there is fire inside of here that we have to be really careful of. Yeah, and I believe this fire... Okay, the fire does eventually go out. <sighs> nope! Of course the bomb bounces into the frickin' fire. And because I went far away from Tricky, he got his ass off the button. Yeah, this is probably gonna take a few tries. If I remember correctly, I believe there's like a like a wooden fence or something we have to blow up in order to reach where the high top the high top the cloud runner is. So we need this bomb. That's bad enough that you have to disable the fire on the way to here. But you also have to navigate the bomb during wind. I'll wait for the fire to go away. Okay, there's only one flame here. No, do not bounce that way! <laughs> oh, thank God. Why are you hitting that corner? Alright, let's stand here, because apparently you really love hitting that one corner. Why are you bouncing off that corner? No, don't you dare hover into the ball into the fire! Okay, this one's a jerk because, yeah, there's two flames here. I believe you're short and the bottom one is a long, so... 
and I mistimed the bottom one. So guess what we're doing again? <sighs> Can you tell this is my least favorite section of Dragon Rock? I swear to God, if the entire episode is just this area. Because Dragon Rock is surprisingly short. Like, I should be able to get the boss in this episode. That's how short Dragon Rock is. That's, of course, if I can actually get the bomb through the wind tunnels. Uh, game? What the fuck did it not drop the bomb? Stay. I'm legit angry about that. It was in place and the thing was like, yeah, I'm not gonna let this go. Screw you, Fox. Oh my god, please, I just want to get the free the cloud runner. Oh, this time you dropped the bomb. Why did you not drop it last time? If any Star Fox Adventures experts want to tell me why in hell the bomb didn't, you know, drop, I would greatly appreciate that feedback. Cause that was really stupid. And of course you're gonna bounce off this wall. Freaking dumbass. Okay. Now can we get you through this? Good, I timed it correctly. Okay, now, do not miss, Fox, otherwise I'm going to be skinning you. Here you can get a buff on Dad, surprisingly. I wasn't aware there was one on Dragon Rock. I thought that was going to be health. Okay, good. I was panicking for nothing. Let's turn this on and... Nope, not quite right. You can just leave it on and just time Tricky's Flame, but it's infinitely easier if you can time the things that way it stops in front of where the flame's gonna come out. Oh, uh, is that going to count? I'm going to find out. How is that high enough to hurt me? Tricky set it on fire. Okay, so two notable things. First off, you may have noticed I think the audio quality was a little off. Secondly, uh, that's because that is an older voice clip compared to the majority of voice clips in this game. Because you may have noticed a plot hole. The Cloud Runner says, hey, are you Crystal's friend? And Fox is like, yeah, I am. Which, Fox should not know Crystal by name at this point. All he knows of her is that she's a blue fox. Trapped in a crystal. 
So you're maybe wondering, how does Fox know Crystal by name? Well, so, uh, fun fact. Fox was originally meant to rescue her much sooner than what we than what we are currently doing. I forget if it was during his first or second visit to the Kazoa Palace, but he was meant to save her. And then she would essentially uh, help Fox throughout the remainder of his journey. I don't know what she would do, and I don't know if she would have been playable again, but... Yeah, she was supposed to help him throughout his adventure. Uh, the developers ultimately chose to cut that out, to cut that from the game, and save Chris saving Crystal for being one of the last things we would do. As they felt it would be a bit more better. However... Because they were rushed to make this game to get it out before the Microsoft uh, buyout, there were some plot holes that were not fixed, and this is one of them, because again, Fox is not supposed to know Crystal by name at this point. But anyway, let's get on this Cloud Runner. The spouse home you seek is hidden below the Great Tower. To get inside, you will have to destroy the four spires that protect it. I will fly you in close, but you'll have to protect me from their fire. So much like the high top, this Cloud Runner is a source of infinite energy. You can fire and not run out. Which I guess sort of makes sense if this was the Cloud Runner Crystal was flying around on. So yeah, the tower is going to shoot missiles and you only can take a certain amount of hits. Once you get close, mash the button because you need to aim for that little circle. We need to destroy all four. Generally, if you're good at button mashing, you can destroy it on the first cycle. But generally, you're going to be doing at least two cycles to destroy this thing. Also, make sure you're ready because the when as soon as you're do, uh, done with this, you're going to be fighting the boss. You can hit the um, the target from far away if you want, as it will still damage the target. Just you know, you have missiles coming to flying at you, and that missile got through. Yeah, so I one cycled that because I was able to hit it from far away. Again, you can hit it from far away, but again, you have missiles to worry about. And I believe the more you destroy, the more missiles they throw at you. Which makes sense, because whatever sharp claws or whatever that's managing this are probably getting desperate if there is sharp claws um, managing it and it's not like an automated system. Which actually, fun fact, you don't fight any sharp claws here at Dragon Rock at all, despite this, you know, being their prison. You think they would have Shark Claws here, you know, managing the prison, and for some reason there aren't any Shark Claws. This is, I think, the only area in the game where there are no Shark Claws, where despite Scales, you know, having full control of each of the satellites. It's all up to you now! The Spellstone is inside, but Scales has it guarded by a terrible creature! You must be careful, Fox! <laughs> I just love that Fox just jumps in without any hesitation. <laughs> Boss Dakrar. So here's Darkroar! You may be thinking, wow, he looks really badass for a boss! He is! Because he was originally intended to be this game's final boss! I'm not joking when I say that! And when this game was Dinosaur Planet, this guy was written to be the game's final boss. This was the guy Scales was working for! If I remember correctly, his lore was, I think in the original Dinosaur Planet, it was that he was, I think like some, uh, I forget if he's like a god or like some sort of like super evil dino that tried to conquer Saria and then 
uh, the dinosaurs along with the Kasoas were able to seal him away in the void. And so he gets in contact with Scales once the seal starts weakening and it's like, yo, Scales, um, if you can, you know, get me out of the void, I will give you whatever you desire. So Scales, and I believe he even gave Scales, I believe, a fraction of his power to help Scales with his conquests of, of, of Saria. So, yeah, he was originally meant to be this game's final boss. And wow, I'm getting my ass handed to me. Um, where is Darkron? There he is. I forget if that's how you say his name. Is it like Darkron, Darkroll, however you say his name? But yeah. But when this game became Star, uh, became a Star Fox game, uh, you may be wondering why is he no longer the final boss? Well, that's a spoiler, so I'm gonna go into that more so when we actually get to the final boss fight. But instead of throwing away Dark On, they decide to have him survive the transition. However, they greatly demoted him from being the game's uh, main villain and final boss. To being a generic, a to being a, to being a regular ass boss that has no personality or character whatsoever. Like I think, like the lore in in Star Fox Adventures, like it's just like yeah, he's um, like a bio weapon that Scales created. You know, nothing interesting like that compared to his already established lore that they built for this guy. For Dinosaur Planet, which talk about a demotion. Not only do you get demoted from being the game's main villain and final boss, to being like, yeah, I am going to be. You're going to be demoted to being a regular boss, and all that interesting backstory you had about you. Yeah, we're just going to throw that out the window and just make you a bio weapon. So yeah, interesting history of Dark Ron. Which I would have loved if they maybe like rework this guy, like I don't know, make him like I don't know, maybe like Scales is like second in command or something like that. That would have probably been be much been like a better rewrite for this guy, cause he looks absolutely badass. His design is great. He's by far the most badass looking thing in this game. It's us again. He got a very very major demo demotion. When this became a Star Fox game. Which, uh, no I don't want to say, but I need to scratch my nose. Oh, I was actually, I was gonna accidentally quit the game. Ooh, that, good thing it defaults to no. Yeah, so you just simply have to shoot him. I don't know if you have to shoot him. I don't know if anywhere on his body counts, or you have to specifically shoot him like in the head or chest area. Also, if you pay attention, you can actually see him holding the spell stone. But yeah, he'll just occasionally shoot at him, shoot his shots to stop his shots from hitting you. You may have to occasionally put out fire so you don't get burnt. Although, he's really dickish when it comes to corners, because he'll shoot and you have to be really on top of your game to stop his shots. So sometimes you won't even see his shots coming. And he'll just get free damage on you. And then there's weird angles like this where you may have a hard time hitting the shots or even seeing the shots. And then yeah, when he drops those mines, just shoot the mines so that way you don't get electrified. He's a pretty simple boss. All things considered, is as he's really tanky. He has a lot of health. So this is more like an endurance thing than anything. And of course I got a few buff on dad, so if I die I should be able to continue the fight right where I let off left off. Like he's I don't know, it's like he's very simple for what is the last regular boss in this game. Okay, I can see shots. Where the hell is he? 
Okay, when you go back into the center room where you started, he generally likes to hang out here for a little while. So you could get some free damage in on him if I can even hit him. Did I hit him at all? Oh, there's a health box there. I never noticed that. Come on, let me get that health. Yeah, this the only the only problem with this fight is that this fight drags. Especially if you're not getting good shots on him. Which I think that's how they make up for the fact that Dragon Rock is so short. It's like, yeah, let's just have the have the boss here. Let's have Dark Ron here have a ton of health. Okay, he's close to death. Also, I'm curious, is this platform automated or is Fox actually controlling this platform? Because if it's something that the Sharp Claws or he can control, it's like, why not just have Fox drop into the lava unless uh, this Darkron, especially now that he's a bioweapon, believes in a fair fight. Okay, you're close to death. Come on! Come on, you're close to dying! Please die! Oh, look at his health! He is so close to death! that hit that where are you dark Ron there you are come on please die ooh I did a good chunk of that I think if you do hit him in the head you do do uh, more damage force point and we can all be on our way home there's an old friend we would all like to see okay guys I'm out of here see you later thanks again Fox good luck my friend <laughs> okay we are done with Dragon Rock so in the next episode we will return to Saria and start making our way to the Ocean Force Point while doing a few things along the way. If you enjoyed this episode, do like the videos, it helps tremendously. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts of this episode and share the video so more people can discover my content and help the channel grow. I'll see you all next time. Later.